some bulls democrats gonna go out here and shoot us up and then want to lecture us about gun control i have an idea for you let's ban democrats from getting firearms i mean most of you lunatics aren't mentally stable anyway i got a background check for you who did you vote for? Let's face it, if you voted for Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, you already fall under mentally ill. If you trigger by expressive thought and scream microaggression, you definitely don't need a gun. If everyone you disagree with is a Nazi, you don't need a gun. If you say things like, you're a white male, while actually being white yourself, you don't need a gun. Matter of fact, the list of Democrats that have actually pulled off domestic terrorist activity is rather impressive. But instead of actually acknowledging the problem, let's blame it on the NRA and all these rednecks. After all, all white people are terrorists and all Trump supporters deserve to be six feet under, right? Yeah, because thinking like that is truly logical. And these are the people that want to take your guns away from you. Instead of worrying about what's good for all of America, how about you get your own people in check? Because after all, if we could get Democrats to stop shooting people, then our crime rate would possibly drop by 90%. Well, good morning. I hope you're doing okay this morning. It's been a rough uh, few weeks in our community here of uh, Yuba County. And I uh, want to just say, to start off, uh, my condolences to those uh, in the Cascade Fire and on up the hill into Nevada County. And that fire, I can't remember the, the name of it, but uh, our condolences to those that have lost uh, animals and loved ones and houses and barns and property and uh, just horrible. And we... Uh, we want to say uh, Santos, Wiki Man, and I are, are uh, want to express our condolences and our sorrow for your loss. And if there's something we can do, you think for you, dial us on up today. You can call us at seven four two fifty five fifty five five three zero. We're going to be talking some about the uh, fire relief today. Not the whole show won't be about that, but we certainly want to be a, a conduit of information. For uh, Yuba County uh, information services that are really uh, gearing up, are, are moving forward today, and uh, we'll continue over the next week or so to enable those that are victims of the fire to connect <coughs> with resources that can make it easier to start over. Early this morning, I was... Well, let me just uh, finish a couple of things and get them out of the way. If you wondered what you're listening to today, uh, you're going to listen to the truth. Uh, there's a guy named Soren Kierkegaard, who is a philosopher that I studied a little bit in college, but my brain was still partly mush back then. I hadn't fully formed, so things like philosophy didn't really set well with me at that time. It was just kind of a blur. But he said this, he said, there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true, and the other is to refuse to accept what is true. So we're going to work at some truth today. We're talking about our local area. This is the Patriot, if you wondered, KMYC, 1410 AM. If you're in an area where the reception is lousy, you can uh, go on to your uh, computer and go to KMYC 1410, sorry, KMYCradio.com, KMYCradio.com. That's an M, not an N, M like in Mickey, KMYCradio.com, and click on the Listen Live button. If you have problems getting us, if there's technological problems like there has been the last couple of weeks, 
uh, you can just uh, say screw it and go to One Eye Blind Media. That's four words all spelled out, One Eye Blind Media. Within the next 20 or 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, and you can listen to the whole show there even if you don't hear it here. Like I think we lost uh, an hour, was it last week? And um, the story was that it was because of sunbursts. So to me, that's tweaker talk. And uh, I don't know whether I'm going to buy that or not. Uh, but the bottom line is, no matter it was elephants, elephants farting in the backyard or, or uh, sunburst, right? I didn't notice any other stage, stations going off the air. Uh, but <laughs> whenever you can't hear us, if we've actually done the show, <coughs> which last week was pre-recorded because I was coming back from Vietnam. At least I thought I was. Anyway, I don't know where I was. Anyhow, uh, oh, that's right. You you weren't going to be here. That That's what the deal was. So, yeah, Wikiman couldn't be here, so we pre-recorded the show. But it didn't play the first hour. But you, if you're concerned or interested, you can go back and go to One Eye Blind Media. That's a YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, One Eye Blind Media. Click on one eye blind media go to their channel click on playlists and you can listen to the whole thing minus a lot of the bumper music uh because they can't put it on youtube and it's minus all the commercials some of the commercials uh you should listen to because they're good commercials uh they're not commercials for money but they're just uh information stuff so uh you can always do that when you get really frustrated you're just going to have to go if you smoke marijuana, just have it smoke a bud or some uh, honey oil or have a drink. Or if you don't do any of that stuff, go for a run or work out at the gym. Then come back 48 hours later. Go to Chris Starkey's One Eye Blind Media, and all life will be pleasant. It'll be euphoric for you, according to what people tell me. So there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. That's called being deceived. And the other is to refuse to accept what is true, and that's just being stubborn. So uh, we have been through hell uh, in Yuba County, where we're broadcasting from. We're out here at Mount Huth, surrounded by marijuana groves and cannabis fumes. And uh, we're, we just had a, a really bad fire uh, move through here and just kick our rear end. And so uh, Cal Fire said that a fire the size of the Cascade Fire should have had 3,000 workers. And at one point, I think we had 682. That's called kicking, getting your ass kicked. And uh, so there you have it, Mr. Jerry Brown, who has been screwing the rural area out of their tax dollars, taking an extra 150 per habitable dwelling and not putting it back into firefighters and fire apparatus, but putting it into education and bureaucracy. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Four years of that, hundreds of millions of dollars going into foo and uh, not equipping firefighters to fight the fires, but just talking about intellectual exercises, sending people brochures and websites about how you can prevent a fire you know maybe we could just put smoky bear in front of every house or something like that so um anyway i just wanted to mention a couple things to you about the fire i was talking to russ brown uh public information officer for yuba county early this morning he sounded tired like a lot of people over here and uh he said that that uh, he may uh, actually if he has time he may call in here in an hour and give you a little update, but he's over at the Yuba Sutter Fairgrounds where the the evacuation center is still open. Many people have left and gone back to their homes uh, or at least to see their homes. Many of the homes are gone, over 100, uh, and many homes that are still there are blackened uh, in the interior with smoke and will not be inhabitable until they're stripped of sheetrock and all the other stuff inside, carpet, flooring, sheetrock, and have a proper restoration done on them. But people are going back to see what happened and what's left. And But the roads, he said, are open. He said PG&E 
has not restored power to all the area, but they've done an amazing job between 100. He quoted me 100 and something, I'll just say between 100 and 200 power poles have already been reinstalled. New poles have been installed where they were either, uh, they were burned and blown over. Uh, so for those that are uh, have been hearing that there's going to be centers where you can get some help and information, I want to just tell you about that. Uh, and uh, there's one center at the Loma Rica Lions Club. They're calling these information centers where they're going to prepare you um, – for the next few days, Loma Rica Lions, which is uh, an information center, that's at 5667 Fruitland Road, 5667 Fruitland Road in Loma Rica. And there are people there from 10 to 6 today, tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday, 10 to 6, and they will uh, provide you the information that's most current and, uh, and help you uh, and lead you to resources that will take uh, some of the sting uh, out of this terrible loss you've had. Also, uh, at the Yuba Sutter Fairgrounds, the same type of information will be available there today through Tuesday uh, from 10 again this morning until 6 each day. This is all going to lead up to, according to Russ Brown, Information Officer for Yuba County, this is all going to pr prepare you to get organized. In other words, at these information centers, they're going to tell you how to get prepared to get help. In other words, uh, taking an inventory of your property, what's lost, uh, what needs to be repaired, the type of things you're going to need. So when you get to the help center at the government center, one stop help center, or what they call the local assistance center, that's going to open up on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this coming week. And that's where all kinds of agencies from federal, state, county, nonprofits, all kinds of people will be there uh, to help you with everything from how to get immediate tax relief uh, so you're not paying taxes on a building that's now gone to uh, waiving all your building fees or the majority of the, your building fees, maybe all of them, and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, again, these are information centers currently that are going to tell you how to prepare to walk in and really get some help because they're going to ask you information that you're going to need. So you need to be prepared for the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday event uh, at the government center at the base of the 10th Street Bridge at uh, 9th and I Street. And uh, where, where the supervisor's chambers are, it's a big room. They're going to turn that into a one-stop uh, arena of, of, uh, agencies where you can just go from one to one to one, you know, one to another and get the, get your needs met. And that center is going to be open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 10 AM to 8 PM, 10 AM to 8 PM. So if you're working, you can uh, jam in there after you get off work, hopefully if you're day working during the day. So, uh, I also wanted to m mention, we had a trauma intervention, uh, tr program meeting Thursday night, and uh, we work closely with Clean Right, Build Right, which is a rest fire restoration organization, a business here in town, and it's also, they also d uh, get rid of hazardous waste or bio waste when uh, someone dies and there's a mess in the home. So we, we uh, refer people to them if they need help as, as well as to other businesses but they happen to be at the meeting uh pam allison who is a uh, pr person for them our community liaison they were she was at the meeting thursday night and she said hey i want to let you know this is a service that uh most people may not know we have and uh because we've been giving out uh maggie capitano with uh, uh who is the insurance agent for tip also is the insurance agent for many people up in those foothills. And so she was asking me, her office, hey, Lou, can you provide us with resources, et cetera, for our clients and other people at the fairgrounds? So uh, there's two websites, yubasuttertip.org, and click on resources for uh, to learn how to help people and how to help yourself. And then there's whentragedystrikes.org 
when tragedy strikes.org, which is how to help others. There's a, there's a column, how to help others. And then there's a column on help. You need yourself. Very good, uh, literature there. You can download it for free. You can print it for free or you can just read it. And, uh, so one of the things that Maggie Capitano's office at farmers insurance said, Oh, Lou, this is a hot item. You gave us, everybody wants a copy is a book that we give out to residential structure fire victims. It's called when, when, uh, after the fire returning to normal. And it's actually a, a small booklet. It's an eight and a half, half by 11, but it's a booklet and it covers like all the things you need to think about after you've gone through a loss from a fire. So we've been hunt, handing out hundreds of those. And so one of the things that Pam Allison brought up at the meeting, cause I was briefing people on the fire at the meeting the other night. And she said, Oh, this is a service that we could help with aside from restoration that we could do it at no cost or very low cost. Now this I didn't think was possible because people ask, Hey, all my clothes were in there. Like there was a lot of uh, fires that uh, a lot of houses that were burned and other facilities that were burned. But a lot of homes, uh, were, were smoke damaged to the extent in order to fix that, you can't just wipe it off and paint. You got to pull the sheetrock out, pull the flooring out, and you're going to have to seal the studs just like you would in almost in a flood and start over. But she said, Lou, uh, we can clean people's clothes. And I thought, Oh, I didn't know people could do that. I just thought you washed them a few times and see if it works. Otherwise you toss them. But she said, no, we can clean them. We have a company that uses an ionized uh, system to, and she said, if they'll bring their clothes in plastic bags, we can get them in 24 to 48 hours. We can get them back to them clean, no smoke smell at all. And it isn't through a normal laundry system. So, um, if you're interested in that, now here's the other thing that I thought was amazing. What do you do with furniture? Like with fabrics, like a couch or chair and, and it's smoke damaged. You can actually bring that to, they have a room where you can leave that in their, in a room and they turn on their machine and, uh, it will remove that smell out of there. That, isn't that a miracle? So she said she can pull that off and actually she can put one of their machines inside your car and take the smoke out of your, take that smell out of your car. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you the address. I'm going to give you the phone number of clean, right, build, right in Yuba city. And you can, if you want to work at cleaning those clothes, instead of writing them off and tossing them, uh, they can help you and, and some of your furniture, right? So the number is seven, four, two, 50, 24. 742-5024. I'll mention that later in the show as well. And they're located uh, at 350 Bridge Street. Just after you go over the 5th Street Bridge into Yuba City, they're right there on the left uh, before you get up to Shasta and Plumas and those cross streets. 350 Bridge Street. Clean right, build right. Pam Allison, she may not answer the phone, but that's their main number. And 742-5024. So I thought that was very interesting. So uh, we'll see whether Russ Brown calls me. Uh, if he does not, we uh, will we'll do a repeat on this. But Russ may have some other information. Again, uh, if you if you need some if you're running around town, you need a, a meal. You're 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 from the fire operation. Uh, you can go into U.S. Center Fairgrounds. Now, one of the disappointing things. Uh, about this uh, fire is typical of every emergency unscrupulous people in our communities uh, take advantage whether they there were rumors of looting looting uh, but there have been no reported incidences according to Sheriff Durfer that there has actually been um, a found case of looting but other things that happened as our trauma intervention program volunteers responded the very first night uh, they were over at the hospital because they brought uh, they brought uh, hospice patients that were at home in uh, in the Loma Rica area. They had to take them somewhere, so they brought them in and admitted them to the hospital, as well as people that were 
in the first hours of trying to get out of there, uh, they were so overwhelmed with smoke and uh, problems that they uh, needed medical care. And so Tip was involved there. But then we were asked to come to the the shelter there at uh, the fairgrounds to assist folks and be with folks. And one of the, the uh, things we witnessed were people that were homeless people from the, uh, the river coming in, even though they had nothing to do with the fire, and uh, ripping off uh, supplies, food, clothing uh, for themselves, uh, pretending that they were fire victims. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, the sad, some of the sad things about any community. It's, it's not our communities any worse than any others. It's just the people. Uh, you have people in every community. There's uh, makers and there's takers, and those would be what I call takers, not makers in a community. So uh, there are a lot of resources right now, and I know many of you that have lost uh, – lost anything whether you can't find your animals i know that yuba yuba county sheriff's department and their posse did an amazing job removing over a hundred cows and horses and getting them moved into the posse arena and uh yuba county and the posse arena in sutter county and the yuba yuba sutter fairgrounds in sutter county uh People did amazing things, but I know that a lot of you have, have losses. You lost your pets. You lost your animals that you were raising. Uh, and in many cases, you lost everything. And so uh, you can call the trauma intervention number 24 hours a day if you want to talk to somebody, and that is 530-673-9300. We're the only 24-hour uh, – I mean, you can go to the mental health crisis uh, clinic – 24 hours a day, but generally we're the only 24 hour helps operation for emotional care in the area, six, seven, three, 9,300. You'll get a live person on the phone or if we're on the other line, you'll get a, a voicemail, but a voice recording, but you'll uh, get a call immediately back, particularly if it's the middle of the night, there's not that much action. So six, seven, three, 9,300. And if you need, if you get confused on where to go for, or and how to get resources and what to do, call that number. We'll we'll redirect you to the Yuba County uh, Office of Emergency Services, which appears to be highly organized and and doing a great job. Uh, so I heard there's going to be a supervisors meeting tomorrow, uh, Sunday. At least that's the way it was described to me tomorrow, and they're going to have a resolution to waive all kinds of fees that normally you'd have to pay. Oh, by the way, here's another thing that, that is really cool. If you probably, if you're up there in the foothills, you probably already found this. If it's not there, you can get one from the Office of Emergency Services or at one of these centers. There, <laughs> if you've got damage, there should be a stake in the ground and a, a plastic bag with a, a starter package of how to get going again, and including uh, free removal of debris on your property and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of free stuff. There's a lot of how-tos, and it's in a plastic bag attached to a stake in, the, in your property. So open that up, and that will be the beginning of you starting over again. And if that bag is gone or if you don't find it, all you have to do is go to the uh, go to one of these information centers and say, I need one of those, and then they'll direct you to where to get that. Okay, so there should be a, a – Russ Brown said this morning there should be a stake in the ground if you got damage, any kind of damage, and a bag with all kinds of information and stuff in there to get you going, to get your place cleaned up and uh, begin to rebuild, okay? So uh, we're going to come back here. We're going to go on for three hours. We'll be here till noon today. If you have any questions, call us, 742-5555. This is a Patriot. Listen to Live with Lou. Bringing new meaning to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. 
It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-9300. Check out the Territorial Dispatched papers a weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. I'm Chris Ann Hall, and if you agree with me, as Samuel Adams said, that knowledge and virtue are the keys to preserving liberty, then join me for free at Liberty First University. For a limited time, we are offering a five day trial membership at no cost and no risk to you. But as Sam Adams said, our ignorance may cost us our liberties. Go to libertyfirstuniversity.com and enroll today for your five-day free trial membership. I've got some bad, bad news for you. You are being brainwashed. And the reason why I say this is because everything that you see, hear, and read is influencing the way that you think. Now, if you watch the news, you might think that humans are getting worse, it's getting less and less safe, and everything's getting more dangerous, but nothing can be further from the truth. A Harvard professor actually did a study and found out that this is the safest time to be alive as a human. To give you some statistics from the Bureau of Justice and from the FBI's website. Since 1993, firearm homicides have dropped 39%. Non-fatal firearm accidents have gone down 69%. Now, if you watch the news, you'd think the exact opposite of that. you think that it's getting worse, right? Now, let's talk about the rest of the world. Is the rest of the world getting safer? It absolutely is. The amount of deaths per year per capita from war across the world is 1 12th of what it was in the 1950s. This is the safest time to be alive as a human. Now you might ask yourself, why would the news concentrate on so much negativity if the world is actually getting better? And the reason why is because they understand the way your brain works. Your brain is designed to look for the negative. And the reason why is because your brain wants you to stay alive. So it focuses on the negative. So if the news puts out more and more negative, you're more likely to watch. Your brain is going to get addicted to watching that negativity, which in turn turns into more advertising dollars for the news companies that you're watching. So of course it seems more negative. Of course it seems like the world is getting worse, but there has never been a time where it's been more safe to be a human than right now. So what can you take from this? Instead of watching the news and thinking that the world is negative and allowing them to brainwash you, you can brainwash yourself. You can start reading books. You can watch motivational or instructional or educational stuff on YouTube. You can listen to podcasts. Because here's the deal. No matter what you listen to or watch or read, it's going to brainwash you. So why don't you brainwash yourself with something that's going to be beneficial for for you versus what the media continues to feed you. Because if you continue to eat what they feed you, you have to deal with the sickness that's going to happen. All right. So if you want to be brainwashed, let me wash your brain. I was talking to the uh, inmates at Yuba County Jail about stinking thinking. And so a lot of you out there uh, ha are victimized by... Uh, being brainwashed by the media, and uh, I haven't had uh, a television hooked up since 1987, and I have been, uh, I've escaped that world and get my information elsewhere. We got a call in, and the question was, is FEMA involved? 
and uh, yes, FEMA is involved, how they are going to help specifically down to the level of the homeowner, I think you will find uh, at the information centers and ultimately at what, what they're calling the uh, one-stop, uh, see we have information centers now, and then we're gonna have assistance centers as soon as you get your tr all your information together, right? It's kind of like when you get burglarized, the first thing the cop says is, what did you lose, right? And so you need to do an inventory of your house when you see it got broke in to figure out what you lost so they can start making, writing their report and logging that so they can then, if they find property, it may be your property, right, in a burglary. So fire, same, same and uh, damages and stuff so uh so yes fema's involved now this really steamed me on the news i was listening i think it was to kfbk uh trying to find some information about the fires and uh because they were given the most current and broad information of the northern california fires <clears throat> and uh they were interviewing a worthless politician by the name of john garamendi and uh, he's, uh, if you just imagine Obama, Caucasian Obama, that would be Garamendi. Uh, there's always a, a, a pig sound uh, when, because he's, he, since he graduated from college, he's had his nose in the government trough. So they were interviewing him. And uh, so he, they, they were, it was a discussion about FEMA. And so they wanted to ask him about the local fires and so then he he couldn't have uh, uh want he couldn't pass up the opportunity to then tell a lie which is that fema didn't respond well down in puerto rico which is an absolute lie even according to many puerto rican leaders aside from the uh that uh syphilis affected mayor of uh san juan puerto rico right that tweaker or whatever she is down there she's a nutcase and so of course cnn focuses on all the people that have been damaged by syphilis if you think why i have syphilis on the mind it's a uh, we have these health presentations at yuba county jail and they said syphilis is out of control in california so uh, if you thought maybe you thought you would mess around a little bit you better wear a condom uh so anyway, but syphilis affects the brain, and some of these politicians, like John Garamendi, who's a liar, uh, took a shot at Trump. I said, you know something, punk? Why don't you go up and help somebody? Like, I, I, I won't mention the firefighter leader that got a call that Garamendi wanted him to take him around, and he said, hey, I'm trying to fight a fire rather than give tours with politicians. You know, I just thought, you know something? These people are so self, self, uh, selfish, self-motivated. It's just, uh, I don't rarely, I, I rarely get sick, uh, on my own. It's usually politician induced. And so, um, anyway, uh, yeah, FEMA's involved, but how, that all plays out. I cannot answer that, but I believe that if Russ Brown calls at 10, a little after 10, we'll, we'll ask him that question. And I think probably that is being developed at this time. Uh, you know, the first, it's interesting, Chris Ann Hall, who you just heard a commercial on, who, who is an expert on the constitution. She was a, uh, she worked for the state attorney's office in Florida for years. And she brought up the fact of why in the world, how did we get to this place where we always are looking for the tit of government to fix everything we need? Where, where has it, where have we lost our way where Puerto Rico is like whining how we need to solve all their problems at the federal level? Why didn't Puerto Rico, they've had hundreds and hundreds of years to prepare, prepare emergency bailout plans like like this for instance if your washer breaks down and it causes panic in your life that's not my fault 
you should have put money aside knowing that your washer doesn't have eternal life and your washer eventually is going to break down. So why don't you just put aside $5 a month? And when your washer breaks down, the only question you have to solve is which color and what brand do we want and replace it? Why can't government do the same thing? Knowing they're going to have eventual disasters, floods, fires, whatever. Why do they suck every tax dollar out of the taxpayer, give it to pensions, and give increase, increase, increase wages and pay for supervisors? Why don't they put that money aside for a disaster and not have to ask anybody for help? Just take solve the problem themselves. Now, if all of us would do that, uh, and, and some areas of the country are like that. The Midwest, when they have major floods, they do that. When you go to New Orleans, who have been taught that they're all uh, incompetent and they don't have the intelligence to manage and take care of their own lives, that somehow the government is there because they can't manage by themselves. The Constitution never did have a plan where the fe- there was to be this massive federal government that would manage our lives and we'd have to go with our hand out to them to save us. Now, reality is today, yeah, there is a FEMA, and they run around. It's called the Federal Emergency Management Agency. So we've got this. What we have, folks, is socialism, and I don't care how Republican or how conservative your representative says he, he is, they are promoting socialism today. The only ones that aren't are ones that say we're not going to do that anymore and we're not going to we're not going to be involved in welfare anymore we're not going to be involved in handouts we're not going to pay the homeless to be homeless we're going we're going to do something different right but but they say oh but what what's happening is is we have a socialist country now and we have a federal government that was only supposed to be there to fight our enemies foreign enemies and now uh Every time there's a disaster, the opposition party takes, ex- takes uh, at least the Democrats do, if it's a Republican office, they take an opportunity to say how the government isn't doing its part. Wouldn't it be interesting if we just said the government doesn't have a part? We just take care of it ourselves. Just ridiculous. So uh, Garamendi thought FEMA was okay locally, but he wanted to take a shot at Trump for Puerto Rico. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm just sick of it. So, um, all right. So if you want to call in, call in and leave a message, and, and we'll answer your question. 742-5555 if you're confused on where the help is out there. In, in other words, the assistance. You know, here's the deal. When you have government involved in every move you make, like it's interesting. Remember when the Galleria burned down Santos down here in Roseville and Governor Schwarzenegger was right before Christmas. What was it? October, September, October. And that Galleria needed to have those Christmas sales. Remember that? We, we talked about it on the show here. And Schwarzenegger stepped in. You know what he did? He said, we're going to eliminate the bureaucracy that costs us a fortune and slows everything down in this state. And we're just going to let you build. And they got that place. I think they got it back going so they could move back in and have some Christmas sales. Isn't that interesting how when there's an emergency, you find out all kinds of ways that you can help people quicker. So now uh, the uh, Board of Supervisors is going to waive all kinds of steps and fees and streamline. And it said, whoa, if we could do it so good now, it's amazing how we couldn't do it in normal times. Like, for instance, if. If I was on the Board of Supervisors, which I don't want to be, but if I was, I would say, don't you think it's an emergency that Yuba County is one of the poorest counties in California? And uh, since it, why don't we declare a state of economic emergency and make it very enticing for businesses to come here and start up? startup businesses and make it really comfortable and and just bend over backwards and work 24 hours a day like i like these emergencies i don't i don't like emergencies 
the fact that people suffer, I that's hard for me. But you know what I like about it? People like are like available 24 hours a day. And uh, like somebody said the other day, he said, well, I hate to bother you. Uh, or, or I think it was uh, when the guys called me the other night, Robert Bendorf and, and Russ Brown and said, Hey, can you send us some, uh, tip people over and extra tip people? And we started to bother you. It was about eight or nine at night. I said, Hey, tip and Denny's we're 24 hours a day, right? <laughs> it's so like, I like 24 hours a day, right? I like, I like businesses. That I, if I want to go shopping in the middle of the night, I like businesses that are open 24 hours a day. I know some can't afford to be, but wouldn't it be amazing if we just said, if you want to start a business in Yuba County or Sutter County, we're going to assign a worker to you and we're going to, we're going to work with you 24 hours a day to get that business up and going and streamline and get you going so we can put people to work up here. Right. But there just isn't that uh, zeal because it's government. And at the end of the week, you ever gone, you ever driven someplace? And uh, when you get home, you can't remember driving the route. Have you ever been at work and at the end of the week, you think, what did I accomplish this week? And, and, and you can't even remember what you did. That's a bad sign right there. Did you know in government, like if you're in real estate sales and you don't have any sales that week, you don't get paid. In government, you don't have to accomplish one thing all week. And you, that check just gets automatically deposited in your account. Your retirement fund is taken care of. Your insurance is taken care of. If you don't feel like going to work, you can just call in and, and lie and say that you're sick. And voila, life goes forward. So there's no hurry. There's always case, sirrah, sirrah. Whatever will be, will be. And uh, fate will take care of itself if you're if God wishes you to have a business here, it will come to pass. It's just this lackadaisical hoop de doop de doo Now I was uh, I was uh, in talking to my friend Randy Mitchell. Now I I get a kick out of all this homeless talk. Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give the homeless a path to self-sufficiency. We're going to help the homeless. Oh yeah. We're, we're not going to arrest the panhandlers. We're not going to do this. You can, they can come and crap on lose lawn all they want. It's okay with us. We're going to be kind. We're a sanctuary city for vagrants, rebels, tweakers, and the whole bunch, right? And, uh, then when you get a guy like Randy Mitchell at the uppercuts barbershop who was homeless, before homelessness was cool and when he was a child and his parents were were dopers and they were in the river bottoms and so randy knows what homelessness is like and he got himself uh, in juvenile hall that's where i met him years and years ago 20 years ago and uh he wasn't a tweaker he used to beat kids up take their clothes because he didn't have enough and uh, so they put him in juvenile hall over and over again, right? He never went to prison. His daddy did. But Randy, um, he ended up with three kids. He's a single, single dad. And uh, he, start, he, he learned how to, he went to barbering school. Uh, and then he opened his own shop called the Uppercuts Barbershop. And uh, so... What happened is people keep spreading rumors that he's a gang member. And then he, he, he took over the cigar box, which is a little pool hall and a bar, and you can get some food there. And he keeps getting harassed by the uh, food services people at the city, the county, and the state. Like the other day they were cooking some hot dogs at some event, and the state of California was there. They got reported. This is how to run businesses out of town. Now, in the uh, so people keep complaining. He's got the busiest barbershop in town, but he says, Lou, they keep spreading rumors. He thinks law enforcement's doing it, that he's a gang member. And he says they keep spreading it at my kid's school. And he said, I'm not a gang member. 
right? He said, I know gang members. And I said, I was talking to him yesterday in the shop. And I said, yeah, I said, I have breakfast and lunch with gang members myself. He said, so I'm not a gang member, but I have acquaintances that are gang members. So uh, anyway, in this, I noticed in this Appeal Democrat article on October 9th, Monday, it says MJUSD, Marysville Joint Unified School District, to host gang awareness seminar. And uh, the Yuba County Sheriff's Office spokesperson, Leslie Carbaugh, who's a nice lady, she listed the highest profile gangs in the area are these, Vario Linda Rifa. Yuba City Norteños, East Merez Norteños, Six Block Crips, West Linda Trace, and the Devil's Disciples Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Well, it's interesting because Randy Mitchell says, Lou, I've been involved in the Devil's Disciples Outlaw Motorcycle Gang for a long time. And he said, there aren't gang members. We're not gang members. They're just a lot of Vietnam vets and all kinds of people. And that, that ne- if, if that devil's disciples bothers you, most Christians don't even believe in the devil. So get over it. You know, most of you don't even believe in the devil. So don't get all worried about a name like that. It's just a name. And uh, it started back in the 60s. So he says, Lou, look at this right in the paper. It says the devil's disciples. That's a motorcycle group that I'm involved in. And he said, we just ride motorcycles. So anyway, uh, it's interesting. He said, Lou, the city of Marysville has harassed me on everything I do. If I want to cook a hamburger, they're on my back. If I put out a sign, they're on my back. If I want to do remodeling and I got a trailer parked here, they're going to tow my trailer. It's just constant, constant, constant. You know, I was noticing in Marysville, there's just more and more empty buildings. And I just wonder whether the goal is to just like empty the whole place out and get it all on welfare and subsidies. Because Randy's got two businesses, uh, the cigar box, and uh, and also right around the corner is his barber shop, the Uppercuts Barber Shop, and and they just harass both of them. And uh, to me, it don't seem right to me. Now my feeling is, I do a lot of work in the Yuba County Jail, and my feeling, my goal is, is to see people change their lives. Now a lot of my friends used to be up to no good. And now they're up to a lot of good. They do a lot of good things here and around the world. But once upon a time, they were in trouble. Whether they were heroin addicts or they killed somebody or they used to beat people up or they were gang members or whatever, whatever. And they don't do that no more. So I thought in this country that if you did your time, you did the crime, but you did your time, we were supposed to welcome you back to society. Now, I understand the concept of In God we trust, all others we monitor. That's why we have probation and parole. But the goal is, is if we always want to label somebody, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. Now, Randy has tattoos, but I noticed a lot of you middle-class moms, you're out getting them tramp stamps right above your butt and and then getting them tats down on your ankles, right, and getting a little butterflies and stuff, and you're thinking all that's cool. Right, and you use gang terminology like, oh, he's got my back. You notice all that gang? You talk like a gang member. You look like a little tramp, look like a little gang member slut. And then you want to take shots at a guy that that never was a gang member but used to be involved in criminal activity but now raises three kids, pays taxes, coaches coaches, uh, softball teams. His kids are in college. And, and you want to, like, talk trash about him. I, I just wish – what I'd like to have is one of the law enforcement guys call me up and let's have a talk about devils, disciples, outlaw, motorcycle gang, and let's see some some uh, evidence that these boys are uh, bad, bad gang members because I'm afraid at this big conference they're going to have, it's on October 25th at 530 uh, over here at Marysville Joint Unified, are they going to trash – the uppercuts barbershop is that what they're going to do so uh you know i don't know uh if they don't have their facts straight maybe that's slander and maybe you could get sued over that i think that's what's eventually going to happen you know it's funny how government 
You know why government gets sued so much? Because no one takes any personal responsibility over there. And uh, so they just think, ah, well, our insurance will cover it. Yeah, I've heard supervisors say that. Oh, yeah, we got that's what we got insurance for. Let people just screw up, talk trash, get get all loose with people, right? When, when you know you're going to get sued personally, you're a little careful, aren't you, about what you say, right? So just hold that thought. Well, um, let's see. We got a couple minutes. Okay. I got, I got my tax bill, my property tax bill. I own a house, right? That's all I own. I, I mean, property. I got a couple of, I got a car and I got my computer. That's about it. If all, everything went up smoke, actually I could probably do better in a hotel room in my house. Anyway, it's less maintenance. So, uh, at this point in my life, but I got my tax bill. And I was telling you last week how Yuba College is not going to out any students that are here illegally and how they're going to pay these DACA, you know, these kids that came in here illegally. They're going to, like, not only protect them, but they're going to give them, uh, they're going to waive their out-of-state tuition fees, and they're going to pay their fee for their DACA fee, which is an application where you can stay an extra two years while you fight your immigration case. And I thought, well, that's, I don't like that because that's my money. You know something? If I want to help a DACA student, I'll help them. What I don't like is when somebody else wants to help them, then they take my money right out of my pocket. And I know it's on my tax bill. Uh, I want to tell you right after we come back about what Yuba College is taking right out of my pocket and giving it to, to students that don't even belong in the United States of America. We'll be right back. You are listening to the station that's been owned and operated by your friends and neighbors for over 72 years. The Big 14. Five in a row. Come on, baby. Let's go. Number one then. And number one in local talk now. Hey, this is Live with Lou broadcasting high atop Mount Hoop. KMYC, 1410 AM, Marysville, Yuba City. Are you or someone you know suffering from National Anthem Hypersensitivity Syndrome? Telltale signs include numbness in the torso and legs before the beginning of professional sporting events, nausea at the sight of American flags, extreme allergic reactions to the presence of men and women in military uniform, police officers, NRA members, and everyone who gladly puts hand over heart. Obsessive affection for murderous left-wing dictators such as Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, and uncontrollable rage at the mention of oppressive phrases such as land of the free and home of the brave. If you've got a case of National Anthem Hypersensitivity Syndrome, here are some simple steps toward a cure. Buy a pair of these handy earplugs to block out the torturous strains of the Star Spangled Banner. Go to a naturalization ceremony and ask a new American to remind you why America deserves your respect and is worth swearing allegiance to. And then step off your publicity stunt high horse and call 1-800-GET-OVER-YOURSELF. That's 1-800-GET-OVER-YOURSELF. Feel better soon and God bless America. Christopher Columbus is beloved by most and hated by a few. Hated by groups like the KKK. They've been attacking Columbus's legacy and his Catholic faith for a century. Radical and disgraced academics too, like Ward Churchill, who taught Bill Ayers' terrorist group how to make bombs and incite violence. Now Antifa is attacking Columbus. These attacks on Columbus aren't based on fact. It's radical propaganda, and it's wrong. Learn more at truthaboutcolumbus.com. All right, welcome back. We're here in our second hour. You're listening to Live with Lou on the Patriot KMYC. And I think we have Russ Brown, public information officer for Yuba County on the phone, as promised. Indeed to you do. Who got you? Thank you, yep. Russ, for calling. Uh, I, I gave a little uh, overview early on uh, about what we talked about earlier. Russ, can you just, why don't you just give us an overview of how we can best help those folks that are damaged by this fire right now the most important thing is to get them uh, the information they need kind of getting them going the right direction and and they're getting that information as well it's it's 
we're, we're trying to look forward uh, later this week on Wednesday when we uh, open up these centers that will allow them to uh, have be a one-stop shop essentially for all the different services that they need to kind of get moving forward again. Things like uh, working with the uh, uh, Social Security, working with insurance agencies, working with the various departments in the county and such that kind of get them permitted and get them moving forward to uh, to help get their, their lives back on track. It's, it's going to be a long weeks and months ahead of recovery. So, uh, but but it's just w- one center at starting Wednesday is all at the government center. All at the, the government center for three days. They'll be open from uh, 10 in the morning until uh, 8 in the evening uh, to to have these tables set up so people can come there and talk to whoever they need to to kind of get on track again. Okay. What, we had a caller earlier that uh, asked about FEMA. Do you have any notion how is FEMA going to be there or how are, how can they help the individual homeowner or are they mainly going to help county the county expenses of fighting this fire how is that uh, it, it it's it's the whole gamut uh, and they've been they've been very much involved they're going to be working with uh, homeowners as well to some extent they, they've been here the entire week with us okay uh kind of working through things in, in this disaster so yes i mean they're they are they are there uh great uh, working on that with us. well you know one of the listeners was interested in that and i didn't really i i thought they were here but i didn't know at what level they were going to engage with folks so that's great so and I, I I mentioned that that you're open there at the fairgrounds right now, right? Is that are you there? Or are you uh, over we, there? We have two locations. One of the fairgrounds, uh, right next to the Franklin Hall, where there there's currently still a shelter and will be for a while. Okay. Uh, set up for those that are displaced. Also, one at the uh, at the Lion uh, Lions Club up in Loma Rica. Okay, and I I I got that address you gave me. So and and that's really preparing, giving information to prepare people on uh, and how to engage at the right. assistance center, right, on right. how to that, get that, organized. That, that, just, that, that, that specifically is running today through Tuesday. Just general information, we're, we're trying to steer people in the right direction if they're looking for information now yeah. Um, yeah. on that. So, uh, so can you explain the stake in the ground and the packet that you left for people? Right. At, uh, our our uh, community development folks, what they did is they, kind of, they, they started working over this week to get ahead of things. They uh, put uh, stakes in the ground at each piece of property with a bag on it that holds uh, information that they need to kind of get started and information on how uh, the approach will be to clear land of debris, uh, things assigned to make sure there are waivers so people can get onto their property to, to clear debris. All the information was in there, and it's, uh, it's being made available uh, immediately so that the people, at least when people show up at their property, they, they kind of see the first steps they need to take. Yeah. So if someone, for instance, if if we missed a piece of property, could they get that bag directly from you folks? Oh, oh, yeah, oh yes, just, just contact us, and we'll even run up the hill to them. Uh, we're, we're, we're kind of determined right now to uh, to get information to folks where they are as opposed to having them run around too much. And would that would that number be 749-7700? That's a good place to start because that comes in, and we have a 24-hour line set up. We have people working the call center from just county workers that have just been in there uh, every day since it started, okay. uh, 24 hours a day. <clears throat> so if they don't, that they didn't get the bag on the stake, seven four nine seventy seven hundred. They call us. We'll, we'll get a hold of community development and make sure that gets to them. And so you mentioned that if they had just, you know, if the place was trashed by the fire, there's a lot of debris, and they just need to get it off there. You guys will actually help do that. Right. We we have that set up to to, to have that done, um, and it, all we need is there them to sign that waiver so that they can to allow a right to passage to get into that property to permit someone to come right. on there and clean and, it and up we understand that a lot of people want to kind of find their their personal belongings before that to check and see what they could salvage and we understand that just be careful not to this, this is uh, required you can't move things off the footprint of the property in your effort to find things just make sure you keep things within there because once you move it off then we can't come in and and, and be a part of that just by uh, rule uh, regulations Okay, I need some clarification. So yeah. if they so if the go ahead, of your property uh, of where the burn is, don't be uh, take your own, bring in your own uh, bobcat or whatever, and push things off while you're searching for things to clear your own land. Push it and off we, where we to somebody it. else's property? Uh, yeah, well, just off of the footprint of, of wherever your home was. Okay, uh, don't disturb it too much. If you, we need to understand, that people are going to go through and find right. uh, whatever they can. I got you. Just don't disturb it too much because we that that's uh, that. Uh, precludes us from coming in. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So, are at the shelter? Are you still serving some meals over there? Absolutely, Red Cross and our uh, 
Health and Human Services public health folks are going strong. Okay. Uh, working working there, and they're going to keep doing that as long as we need to. Uh, it, we, we're, we're trying to let people work through the process of their insurance, getting into hotels and other places where they can stay yeah. uh, safely. And uh, let's see, what else are they going to ask you? Uh, it escaped. Any other, any other, well, I, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you, but I can't think of it right now. You, is there any other things that we need to cover yeah. here? Yeah, just, uh, just anybody returning, remember, there are an awful lot of PG&E and uh, Cal Fire folks still out there watching for hot spots uh, and, and other workers kind of moving about. Uh, the looky-loos won't help. <laughs> yeah, the so they're still the putting burn. up poles, right? Um, they're still they're still trying to restore power, right? Exactly. That, they're trying to get there. still a few, quite, quite a few uh, areas that still need to get power restored. Uh, the roads still have debris on them. Branch, you know, a lot of trees are burned and in uh, and, and, and peril of falling over, so we want to just, be, just take a look extra yeah. precaution and moving around that area. But, but you said earlier, let's just make this clear, you said that all the roads are open now? All the roads are open. They, okay. they did the initial clearing of, them, of the roads themselves. So now people that are trying to, you know, maybe they got bad information, they can they can all go back to their properties they and check them out. They can all go back out. to their property. Okay. Uh, right, and right. the thing is, once you pull off off the road and onto a long driveway or something, like that, be, be very careful. You know, cause right. in, in those terms, not all the roads are closed in terms of those little private driveways and such. Got it. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, just, uh, you know, the, the call center is there. The, the, we'll mention it. Yeah. Call us if you have any questions. We're, yeah. we're happy to answer them. We'll have the information table set up from, this is from 10 to 6 each day. Right. Uh, at those two locations, the Fairgrounds and Loma Rica Lions Club. Okay. Uh, to have the information set up and handed. I understand that almost... All the information was handed already. We barely started at Loma Rica Center. We're gonna get oh, you already they they blew it right out of there, huh? Well, they, well one piece of information. We have these packets that oh. we're gonna, we'll produce more of. It's, okay. It helps people kind of those that really lost everything to help calculate, right. remind what take what an they inventory. Lost yeah, to help get a dollar value started so they can recover faster. Got it. Okay. Well, we've we've given out the number here. If anybody has any questions or they're they're uh, need some guidance, so. We'll, uh, we'll keep connecting. Thanks so much right. for taking the time to call, Russ. Thank you much. Okay, see you later. All right, that was Russ Brown, and he is with the uh, Yuba County, and he is the public information officer, and he is working uh, along with a team of people that have been working 24 hours a day, call center, and been doing a great job. One of our tip volunteers is over there uh, who works for the county, uh, and she's been involved in Wells, another tip volunteer, trauma intervention who has been working a lot uh, for the posse, removing animals and saving animals and uh, just helping out uh, manage things up there. So if you have any questions, you got whoever uh, called on the FEMA thing, you got that question answered. <clears throat> so, uh, all right. Let's see. I wanted to just uh, say before we got back to what I was talking about uh, that this uh, show – is uh, not sponsored by the government. Uh, it's uh, brought to you by people that that want uh, a perspective shared in our community. And so they're individuals that, uh, you know, you think, what can I do to make a difference? And people say, oh, I don't, I don't believe in voting. I don't do this. I don't do that. Well, really what they do is just sit around, drink beer, and sit on a couch and think then they whine about America, right? So I have some friends that, that – uh, got me involved in this this program and said hey we'll pay for the time because the pay the uh i'm not good enough yet for the station to pay me so uh anyway folks pay my way here but others actually pay some of the cost of being on the radio it's not free and one of those is uh the sutter buttes tea party patriots sutter buttes tea party patriots who have been around for a number of years now, and remember when the Tea Party movement sprung up and the Democrats just threw a big fit and, thought, oh, yeah, these are like terrorists and they're this and they're that and they're white, you know, they're racist. Remember all those things? Remember that? And they mocked them on CNN, made sexual jokes about tea bags and all that kind of stuff. Remember that? Well, these are actually good people. They're like salt of the earth type people. They're people that uh, when there's a fire or there's a c catastrophe, they're the first people there to try to help. And uh, so they are still meeting uh, in this area and, and standing up and uh, for what's right and informing the public 
you know, a lot of people just don't know what's going on. That's most people. I'd say they just have no idea what's going on, why things happen the way they have happened. And they see the results and they think who made that decision? How'd that happen? So the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots uh, meet w the first and third <clears throat> Monday night of each month at uh, 630 doors open at six and they meet out at a building on the uh, Church of Glad Tidings campus at uh, 1179 Eager Road. That's Highway 99 at Eager or Live Oak Boulevard at Eager. Building 200. And they are meeting uh, two days from now on Monday night. And they're going to have a great uh, topic. And it's a topic that actually affects all of us. And it's floods. Bummer, right? We just got through forest fires. I was telling somebody the other day, I, lived, I live in Marysville. So when it's really high water and the levees are got boils on them, I think, oh, I should move up to Loma Rica, right? Up in the foothills. Then when they have a fire, I think, oh, I'm glad I'm down in the valley. So we have some challenges here. And so uh, they are having the what we call Sabufka, which is Sutter Butte, two counties, not Sutter Buttes, the mountain range, but Sutter Butte flood control agency is going to be there answering questions. There's a couple people from there going to be there informing on the progress of working, I think over on over 30 miles of levee from beginning up in Butte County and down through Sutter County, protecting to the West of the feather river, because the feather river is a dangerous river. And when it gets high, it wants to leak through and it just wants to come on through into where we want to live. And so, uh, back in 2010, there was a big push to have the voters vote to assess themselves a lot of money on top of all those property taxes and bonds and everything that are on your property taxes to assess themselves, uh, fees every year for the next 30 some years to pay for a redo of that levy that runs down the west side of the feather river so that's been going on and since we passed that well what happened is they tried to pass that before and people voted against it because they didn't trust the people that were running the county to put it very it, it's pretty sad right when you have people that are supposed to be the leaders of your county and you think they're they're liars and ripoffs so you vote against something. So in order to get the most support to get that measure passed, the people behind this flood control measure, they were desperate because Yuba County had already done their levies, were already working on their levies and were doing really well. And so, but Sutter's were porous. They, they had a lot of flaws in them and they knew they were going to have big problems. And the insurance rates are going up because they, they didn't have the levies up to the proper standard. So they, the leaders of this movement went to the Sutter uh, Taxpayers Association, Sutter County Taxpayers, and said, listen, we need your support. And they said, we'll give you uh, support on a condition. And that condition is that you have a citizens advisory committee that is overseeing and, and, uh, and informed and you'll, you'll be transparent with them and you will inform them of how you're doing what you're doing. And they'll get to look at the books and the salaries and the decisions you make so we can, uh, justify and affirm the fact that you're honest and you're, you're making a good use of our money because people were trusting the government to, uh, add more dollars to their properties that they'd have to pay a fee that they'd have to pay every year. So at the church where I attend, I mean, even nonprofits had to pay who are tax exempt. And so we pay, I don't know, it was thousands of dollars a year towards this Sabufka. So lo and behold here recently, Sabufka says we're short of money. So, um, and we don't think we don't like this, uh, citizens advisory committee. So they voted to eliminate it. And so after promising, they lied, right? They promised. And then while no one was really paying attention or few people cared, there were a few people that fought it. 
They just thought, oh, we'll just get rid of that. And you, and just the same old thing, we're the government, you can trust us. Well, the government is the last people you can trust. I just don't say that from personal experience. The founding, if you take the time to read the founding fathers' documents, they said the same darn thing. Don't trust government. In fact, have a lot of weapons and teach your kids how to use them because we may have to shoot the government, right? That's exactly what they said. It wasn't, it didn't have anything about protecting against criminals or shooting a deer or a duck. It was shooting the government. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. If you haven't like had a bowl of weed yet today. So anyway, here we have Sabufka is now lying to us and, uh, kill this committee. And they are going to be speaking at the Sutterbees Tea Party Patriots meeting uh, this coming Monday night. So today's the 14th, 15th, 16th. Glad tidings. You can get there at 6. They have refreshments. Anybody's welcome at any of their meetings. They don't have a membership as such where they exclude people. So anybody from any county, you can just dip in there and get it on. And they're interested in more and more people being informed and becoming activists. Like I've always told them, I said, you know, the, your, your best work as the Tea Party was done when you were showing up at city council meetings and supervisors meetings, all in the same color shirts and saying, we like that or we don't like this. And uh, we're going to work against you if you don't like go along with us. Right. So uh, so check it out. I, I just drove over the, the the bridge yesterday, and I was just checking that levee out between the two bridges along the right along downtown Yuba City. They're reworking that whole stretch because the that darn levee keeps leaking there. It just keeps leaking, and so they're back over there trying to repair that thing after they worked all the way through this area once before. So they're back at it. So check it out. Okay, we're also supported by a couple friends of mine that go back. Uh, over 40 years, and one is Dave Greenitz uh, with Greenitz Construction, and uh, he he is an amazing carpenter and uh, just an amazing guy. And uh, you know, I always make a joke of independent contractors who are so independent they'll tell you they're coming by to start the job and they don't show up. It's like the weather; you don't know what's going to happen. But with Dave, that's not true. In fact, with Dave and my friend Ted Holmes with Plumbing Doctor, they're on it. If, you, if they promise you something, they're going to do it, even if it costs them something. Even if they promise you something and they say, oh, this thing's not working out the way I thought. It's going to cost me a lot more money. They'll just eat it. They just, they're honest people, and they do great work. And, and you can actually – I'm sure you don't want to look at a toilet or anything for the Plumbing Doctor – uh, but you could look at Dave Green. It's remodels on kitchens and baths. There, no, there's none like them in the area. You can go to Green. It's G R E E N E T Z construction.com and check his stuff out. He didn't steal those photos from some other website or off the internet of some Photoshop deal. It's actually his work in the local area. So, uh, anyway, I hope you, uh, use those guys. I use both of them. They help me keep my life together. One of the many resources that uh, folks that shore me up. So I was talking earlier before we got uh, on to uh, listening to Russ Brown and uh, then talking about the Tea Party. I wanted to go back to this thing where the public education are are really, uh, you know, they think they're separate and exempt from the laws uh, that we operate under. I remember when I used to attend Sac State, people used to smoke dope, do drugs, and just they just thought the cops can't do anything uh, to us here on this campus, and we can say what we want, we can do what we want, we can tell them they're all pigs and F off. and all, Oh, yeah, it was wild when I was down at Sac State. And, I, and that was a conservative college. That was considered a commuter's college from business people and stuff coming in there, workers. So I was noticing that in my tax bill for my house, I have a little postage stamp lot very small lot with a house in downtown Marysville. And I noticed that over $85 I have to pay on my tax bill for school bonds for Marysville Joint Unified and for Yuba County, uh, Yuba College. And uh, it's interesting. So I have a stake. Now, I don't have any kids in school. I'm long past those years. And I've owned homes since about the 19, 
I was living communally up until about 1981 and probably wasn't, a, I didn't even get started till I was in my thirties to even own a home or buy a home because I didn't have any money. And, uh, but I've owned homes since then and I've been paying taxes. And of course, back in the day, I had some kids in the school and felt good about supporting that. Uh, but now I'm paying $85 a year towards these schools and you can just multiply it towards all the people in the Yuba community college district all over the counties, multiple counties. And then they tell you that your kid who's a citizen here got to pay the normal fees. Or if there's a kid from Oregon that wants to come down here, you got to pay out of state fees. But if you're illegal, if you broke the law coming here, then you don't have to pay out of state fees. And in fact, if you're illegal here, they're not going to, they're not going to cooperate with law enforcement. And if you're legal here, they're actually going to pay your application to not be deported out of my tax dollars. Isn't that amazing? I think that's wrong. And I think it's a ripoff to the taxpayer. It's one thing uh, if, if, if they're going to like say, well, we're not going to work. They say, we don't have to tell, you know, it's all like, it's, you know, like in medical to hospital, the HIPAA rules, which they can't divulge anything about your medical stuff to anybody else. It's like they're taking that on, on political. Now, there isn't a week goes by that a DACA, a DACA uh, kid, they're not kids, they're up to 31 years of age, a DACA person, illegal, murders somebody, rapes somebody, shoots somebody, runs over somebody drunk, right? So they're not exceptional kids. They're just people, right? They're not like star athletes or brainiacs that – that we recruited to come here to go to college. No, they're not any of that. They're just people that their parents broke the laws and brought them in here. And they never, they never got their citizenship. They've been, do, they've been being underground. And, uh, so anyway, in fact, I had a gal that was in Yuba County jail. She was an illegal. she committed a crime. She got out, fought her case and they kept her. She went on Facebook and started talking trash about America and I hosed her down. And then all of a sudden she said, Oh, Lou, I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, you know, she, at one, one, out of one side of her mouth, she wants to be a citizen. On the other side, she's trashing the country. I said, why don't you, why don't, there's 221 countries. Why get stuck on America? Are we out of time? We're out of time. I'm going to be right back. I think we got, what, we got an hour and a half left? All right. Hang with us. This is Life Issues with Brad Mattis, president of Life Issues Institute. The abortion industry and activists have long lamented the number of abortion mills closing in so-called red states where pro-life governors and legislatures have been elected. But in a recent article, Madeline Schwartz says they're closing in liberal blue states, too. And the reason given is plain economics. In part, the demand for abortion has fallen, which is a great thing. Shauna Heckert, an executive over six abortion mills in liberal California, is expecting some will close. We're a dying breed, she says. I say better their business dies than millions of innocent unborn babies and sometimes their moms. All the while, plan and parenthood is growing and putting the little guys out of business. All the more reason we must take their half billion annual tax funding away. Follow us on Twitter at Life Issues USA and stay informed, more informed than you've ever been. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscriptions. Only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic and weather information along with a calendar of local events visit the e-territorial at eterritorial.com a lot of people believe that health care is a right well that is utter nonsense people don't have an understanding what is a right let me just briefly explain what a right is a right is something that exists simultaneously among people a right does not confer any obligation on another. Let me give you an example of this. My right to free speech does not impose an obligation on another except that of non-interference. 
my right to travel, to travel to Texas, to travel to California, does not impose an obligation on somebody else. That is, we share these rights simultaneously. Now, when somebody is talking about a right to health care, whether he can pay for it or not, that's not a right because that imposes an obligation on somebody else. That is, if you have a right to medical care, whether you can pay for it or not, it of necessity means that somebody else does not have a right to what he earned. Because the government does not get the money from the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus. It has to get it from somebody. And so you're right. If you say you have a right to medical care that you did not earn, or you have a right to housing or food that you did not earn, it of necessity means somebody else must not have a right to something that he did earn. Now, the way the rights are used now by the, by the left in our country, and so and many of the right as well, my right to travel free, freely would mean that you have to pay for an airline ticket for me and, and hotel accommodations. Or my right to free speech would impose an obligation on others to buy me a studio, to buy me a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, they are not rights. They are merely wishes. Now, if you say that if you wish everybody had health care, everybody had insurance, then I would agree with you because I wish every American had it too. I wish every American had a nice car, nice house, had a good job, but it's not a right. So there's a difference between wishes and rights. And when you allow government to say, well, we're going to create this right, we're going to create that right, even though people don't have the money, then it's taken away rights from other people. Is that fair? Is that any kind of justice? Now, so you say, well, Williams, well, what are we going to do? What, 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 what could we do without a food stamp program? We absolutely need a food stamp program. Well, when people say that, we absolutely need this program or that program, I always ask, what did we do before? I mean, in the case of food stamps, when the poor Irish were landing in the 1840s, fleeing the potato famine, landing in New York without anything, was there a food stamp program? Or did they just die on the streets? Were you stepping over dead bodies all over New York because of people starving? That's not a part of our history. So we have to always ask the question, what did we do before? And more importantly, what is the constitutional authority for the federal government to be doing it? All right. Welcome back. You're listening to The Patriot, KMYC, 1410 AM. This is Lou Benninger. You're listening to Live with Lou here with the Wiki Man Santos Vigil. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago I had to go up to uh, – <clears throat> Uh, Reno to go to the national tip conference. We move it around every year. So there's a, a number of tip programs around the United States. Yuba Sutter tip was the eighth, uh, in the United States started in 1994, December. And, uh, we learned about it because it was starting in Las Vegas and I heard about it through a friend of mine. And so I called San Diego where it originally started and thought, oh, I wonder if this is a good program for up here because I was doing some chaplaincy work. and So anyway, each year, uh, trauma intervention program leaders from different cities like Portland, Vancouver, up here, Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Maine, and Pensacola, Florida, and Reno, Las Vegas, Orange County, San Diego County, around the there's – there's a few programs, not a lot, but there's a few programs – and we cover a few hundred cities and have a couple thousand volunteers. So anyway, I was up there, and so we did a pre-record. And uh, so we did that did that uh, Friday, Saturday uh, training or conference. And uh, so I was there with uh, all the people from around the country. And then we all took off, and I came down the hill from Reno and – and then the next day on Sunday, it caught a plane to Vietnam, and so we did another pre-record. So anyhow, uh, 
but the reason I bring it up is that when the Las Vegas leader, Jill Roberts, uh, went back to San Diego that next week, uh, the Mandalay hotel shooter started up and, and started firing, um, at a crowd of about 23,000 people, uh, just a, a ways from the Mandalay hotel and, and begin to kill people and wound people. And so Las Vegas, Nevada trauma intervention program responded to that. And I've been watching on Facebook. They've been posting some stories and, uh, they, uh, they have helped a few, a week ago, they had helped over 2,500 people, uh, through their volunteers. They were, at, they posted themselves at five different hospitals in Las Vegas, assisting wound the wounded that went to five different hospitals. They were also at the metropolitan police department operating out of there as well as other spots, but, uh, they've done some great work. They have a big program They they do, uh, they have probably over a hundred volunteers and, uh, but they just did some amazing work and they're getting high praise from the city. In fact, one, I think it's a medical group. They hosted their monthly meeting at their offices. And when they came in, they, they had all their employees from this big medical, uh, company. I don't know if it's insurance company or whatever, lining the hallways in kind of a, uh, making a human tunnel, uh, with thank you cards and high-fiving all the volunteers coming in, paying for their uh, meeting and feeding them and all kinds of stuff. So the city is really rallying to uh, say thank you very much to TIP. So that was uh, really a proud moment for a lot of us that are involved in TIP around the country. Obviously, we all support one another. Uh, when Reno had their air races crash and a lot of people were killed and, and a lot maimed from the crash of the airplane, same thing up there. So um, tip here locally, it's interesting because you'd think, oh man, they're doing 100, 150 calls a month at Portland, Oregon and and Las Vegas, big programs. But we actually do the highest number of responses per capita in the nation here. And it isn't because uh, more bad things happen in Yuba Sutter than happen in big cities. It's just that the emergency response agencies uh, utilize us more. They just they just want us as a, they 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 tap into the resource more. And uh, it was interesting because a friend of mine, uh, Randy Potts, who owns Randy's Towing Service, I've known Randy and Sarah for years. They uh, just you know twenty years probably, but Randy. One of his daughters was driving a car the other day and a, a man ran out into the street and ran in physically on foot, ran into the side of her car and fell over and then was hauled to the hospital and died at the hospital. And, uh, obviously the, the teen daughter was, or maybe she was 20, I don't know, teens probably. She was uh, hysterical, obviously, and so Randy, being a tow truck driver, knew and knew me, knew about Tip, and he actually, instead of law enforcement or fire or Bi County Ambulance calling Tip or the hospital, Randy actually asked the uh, emergency responders, "Hey, can you call a Tip person to help my daughter?" So it's pretty cool. But we're uh, we operate in this area uh, on donations. We don't get government funding. We never have, and that's. That's not true of most other TIP programs in the country. In fact, I think all of them besides us will not operate in a, in a community without some sort of government help. It, it doesn't carry the program, but some sort of government help. And uh, so, in other words, if Yuba County wanted to help us and Sutter County didn't, uh, tip, tip, typically wouldn't, they wouldn't serve Sutter County. They just say, oh, you don't want to support us. We won't. We won't we're, you're, not a, you're not a supportive community. For instance, in Orange County, there's lots of cities in Orange County, major cities, San Juan Capistrano, right? Uh, Laguna Niguel, or, you know, on and on and on. And whatever city wants to support TIP, they will serve that city. So we serve uh, regardless of city support. We haven't asked for city or county support. So we're all uh, privately supported. So if you want to support us, we're raising some money. Now, we normally did do a dinner at this time of the year, but we lost our caterer that catered for free and we lost our venue, which uh, gave us a really good deal. And even if we were having our dinner at this time, can you imagine, I don't know whether we could pull it off with, with these fires and all the craziness that's going on right now, but 
if you're interested in supporting tip you can just by donating to us there's not any big event or dinner uh, if you don't don't and uh it's easy for me because if enough people don't then i won't have to run the program right so we've done over t- <laughs> we've over ten thousand calls a year i got a busy life and as tip disappeared out of my life uh i wouldn't miss it uh because i got a bit you know i got other things going on that would fill that void uh of something to do i wouldn't be a one i wouldn't go out and get a television and look at channels to see what i want to watch every day so uh but if you want to support us or you want us to be here you can support us if you don't don't and that's very simple it's okay with me either way but if you want to support us if you think tips a valuable thing we've done over ten thousand nine one one calls since 94 december uh it's easy to support us you can go to you you caring you caring dot com backslash tip and and give like you always wanted to or you can go to yubasuttertip.org yubasuttertip.org and go to uh donation and uh you can give there or you can just mail us a check some some people have been mailing us a check off uh my mentions on the radio here and uh you can just send a check to tip and and then nothing gets deducted right um you get the whole thing goes to victims. We don't have any salaried people. You know, when you give a lot of money, when you give a lot of to these uh, big organizations, uh, a lot of it goes to support CEOs that make a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. Here, when you give to tip, all the money goes to victims and to train our uh, volunteers that serve at no cost. So. Um, you could mail a check to TIP tip PO box six, four, five Marysville nine, five, nine, zero one, uh, PO box six, four, five Marysville nine, five, nine, zero one. And all the money stays here. All, you know, we, we serve people were shocked. I gave a presentation at the tip program, uh, the tip conference and people were shocked when they learned how many agencies we serve for just a small little geographic area or small number of people. We serve a big geographic area. Like I think Yuba County is 644 square miles. And I think Sutter's about that as well, but there's not a lot of people up here, 160,000 maybe, but they were amazed at how many, like we do two sheriff's departments, three police departments, 20 some fire agencies, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I was telling them how many chiefs had come and gone and sheriffs had come and gone during our 23 years. And, uh, it outdid all of them. These big programs don't have all these little teeny departments that di- slice and dice up the community. So if you want to uh, help us, great. If you don't, we'll be gone. We'll be gone and we'll move on and, and have been happy about what we accomplished uh, and we'll do something else with our life. So um, I wanted to go back and talk some about the uh, situation. Uh, as, as you know, we have uh, homeless in the area. And a friend uh, emailed me a map of San Francisco, and I thought, and I'd heard about uh, this app. You know, and, and when you're in Sa- San Francisco, uh, if you're a resident down there, you'd be aware of this. There's an app on their phone, and if you're walking down the street and you found somebody shit on the street, and if you if you bother, if that's a bother to you, the, the title to this article, San Francisco's public defecation map highlights a shitty situation. So if you notice on the street that somebody shit on the street, like, why don't let's just be, let's just be raw about it if we're going to allow it. And, uh, so we have, you know, uh, Walter Munchheimer and Aaron Easton at Marysville and, uh, and Scott Mitnick from Sutter County. And I assume the city council of Yuba city is into shitting on the street. So, uh, so on this map, you can, if you're in San Francisco, you can go to this app and you can report without talking to anybody, a pile of shit on the street. And, uh, and that's then logged and they have, uh, shit scrapers, uh, that come out and uh, clean off the street. Now you think, Oh, Lou, you're just being rude. No, I'm not. Because I don't know whether you've been watching the news, but is it San Diego, which most people think of a, as a very pristine city? They have an outbreak of hepatitis. So if you think, A, it's no big deal, it is a big deal. 
And uh, L.A.'s facing the same thing. They're having outbreaks that you would think of that would come from the Middle Ages, right? When you heard, used to hear about hepatitis, cholera outbreaks, typhoid, things like that, sewers in the streets, right? Some third world countries I, I go to, there's sewage runs alongside the road, right? That's bad news on disease issues. So they're having outbreaks of, of uh, hepatitis. And so uh, a lady by the name of... Um, Let's see, where is her name? I saw it. Jennifer Wong. She's a civil engineer and also now a web developer. And she created a map plotting the human excrement incidents reported by to the public. And uh, her project won an internal hacking contest for employees of a real estate website. And uh, so it's, ama- it's amazing. It's the... Uh, public defecation map and it's and so the real concentrations of crap is at a a downtown alley next to the financial district right in the high traffic area frequented by tourists now i probably walk this area because when i need a chinese visa to get into china i bart over from the east bay to the civic center exit climb up out of bart and walk up through Civic Center where all the mayors and, you know, all the government is and, and hike up to Geary and through that area. Or I can't remember the street that the, uh, the embassy is on, but I got to step over all people and stuff, right? So I'm wondering whether we can't add that app because we're, we're now launching this tent city on 2nd Street and right next to Little League Park. And uh, I'm wondering if, if – if maybe, or we can have these, you know, I notice in some of these fancy subdivisions, they have these little posts with a little thing on the top and you can pull a little bag. It's a pooper scooper bag that you can slip your hand in and then you can scoop up your own poop and deposit it in the next receptacle. I was wondering if maybe Scott Mitnick has included some of those pooper scooper bags and, and depositories and, and uh, bag receptacles where we can grab bags, like at the Little League Park, maybe they're pooping on the grass, and the shortstop can go out there and pick up somebody's poop and get rid of it before they step in it and then have a big scene and have to stop the game there at Peach Bowl Little League. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I thought this, there's an actual map of all the city streets, and every pile of poop that's been identified by this app, and then... uh, then this team, can you imagine uh, your mom coming back from the dead and wondering what you've done with your life? And you say, Mom, I work for the city of San Francisco. She says, Son, what do you do? I scoop up human poop. <laughs> That's my mission, right? I went all the, you funded me all the way through school. You nursed me back to health. You bought all my clothes. You helped me go to San Francisco State University. And now I'm a pooper scooper. Because the city of San Francisco doesn't have the balls to have people poop in the right spot. And they want to let homeless people live, vagrants live all over the streets and give them, uh, you know, provide heroin for them and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's what we have up and coming. If you wonder, like, there's new movies coming at Movies 8. Uh, There's also a new program coming to the uh, city of Yuba City in Sutter County, which is the uh, 2nd Street homeless city and it's gonna it's gonna affect the airport it's sad because the poor airport people the guys that run the airport are so petrified uh it's sad you know where the government have you has you so petrified you wet your pants because they they decided at the sutter county airport operation that they uh they're going to take a neutral stance because they're afraid that the the county's going to shut down the airport. Well, let me help you out, Sutter County Airport guys and gals. The, the, the goal of the Sutter County administrator is to shut your airport down, whether you like it or not, whether you stay neutral or throw a hissy fit. Your airport is history because it's a big pain in the rear to the administration. Uh, it's sucking county daughter, dollars. They know they owe you a lot of money, and they don't want to pay you the money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They should have been paying in fees to the Sutter County Airport. They don't want to pay you that money. 
Nate Black knows how much money is owed to you. They don't want to pay you that money. They want the airport to disappear, and they want to use that land for commercial purposes. So one way to uh, – do you know that they, they need FAA permission to put that homeless camp down there and it wouldn't surprise me if they just have getting a big fit with FAA and FAA just shuts the airport down. Then the county doesn't, they can blame the FAA, right? Because, well, you know, the FAA shut down the airport, right? And we didn't want them to, but they really did. But really they want the, the government of Sutter County wants the airport gone, right? So hold that thought. So being neutral ain't helping you much. So what's going on now, as I mentioned last week, is I just want to describe this to you, and there was a board meeting that was very deceptive uh, this last week on the 10th, and uh, this board meeting was to change the camping ordinance, uh, create a no camping ordinance with the, some teeth in it. It was a second reading of the no camping ordinance, uh, and what it basically said is if it's public property, already people shouldn't be on private property, right? And that should go for them that want to poop in my backyard over in the city of Marysville. Uh, but they do it when I'm not looking. And so uh, this camping ordinance in Sutter County says you you can't camp on public property. Uh, you can camp up at the Live Oak campground if you follow all the rules and you're there temporarily in and out, in and out. But uh, so the supervisors – you know, they had a lot of, this was uh, item nine on the agenda. So a lot of people came because in that ordinance, it says they're going to make an exception on one area where they can have a camp. Where do you think that is? Hillcrest, right? Do you think it's North Yuba City out there where Interwest has their homes? No, no, no. Do you think it's out there in Wilder Estates? No. Nope. It's down there on 2nd Street. They made an exception, and they said, we can have a camp down there. So when people came to complain, when people came to complain, that would be people from the Peach Bowl Little League, the people with the posse, the posse arena where they have all the animals from the uh, Yuba County foothills right now, people from Twin Cities Rod and Gun Shooting Range. Uh, it also is going to affect – uh, Whitaker Hall or the Sheriff's Training Center that's used for a lot of uh, people to have events there. And there's also another shooting range to the south of that. So when people showed up to speak about item number nine, Chairman uh, Jim Whitaker did something very unusual and unique. Right at the beginning of the meeting, he said, I'm going to pull agenda number nine and uh, agenda item number nine, and I'm going to put it under the consent calendar. Now, if you've been on a board or been around board meetings, you know that the consent calendar is a whole litany of issues that they can they vote on all at once unless a supervisor says, I don't want to vote on that one all at once. I want it separate. And they say, let's pull that one out. But he, instead of handling it separately – where there would be open debate on it and a discussion, he put it on the consent calendar and they just passed it with a bunch of other gobbledygook. Then he asked the county council if he didn't screw up because he had a whole host of people there to speak on item number nine, the ordinance, because they had a problem with it because in that ordinance – was a opening for a big camp that nobody got a chance to talk about yet. So when he asked the county council whether he screwed up, the guy said, yeah, you did, and now you got to take that issue and address that issue on a separate meeting. And then Jim Whitaker says, well, okay, and he ignored what the county council said and said, I take full responsibility of it. In other words, ollie, ollie, auction free. If I take full responsibility, that means I'll do whatever I darn well please. And so don't get tied up in the details. We just, we're just going to do a broad brush on this thing, and we're going to you know, let these people speak about it even though we've already voted it in, right? So I'm going to tell you the rest of the story because they rejected a contract that a person just missed one little item and they kicked the contract 
and they lost the bid, although Jim Whitaker just did whatever he wanted to do. And Marxist revolutionary Che Guevara died 50 years ago today. And if you aren't paying close enough attention, you'd be forgiven for thinking he's some kind of a freaking saint. A new stamp has been issued with his image in Ireland, and statues of Che litter the world's city squares, particularly in Latin America. And those f***ing t-shirts. Search for Che Guevara t-shirts on Amazon and you get 798 choices. But Che Guevara was a stone-cold killer. He was chief executioner in Fidel Castro's bloody socialist regime, a reign of terror killing some 77,000 innocents. Here's what he himself said about his role. This is a revolution, and a revolutionary must become a cold killing machine motivated by pure hate. On his murderous legacy, Thor Halverson, president of the Human Rights Foundation, does not mince words. The Cuban Revolution, under the direction of Guevara, saw the rise of forced labor camps, which gave way a few years later to full-scale concentration camps. These were filled with dissidents, homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Afro-Cuban priests, and anyone else who had committed crimes against the new moral revolution. So now you know. Socialist intellectuals will apologize for Che Guevara. It was for the greater good, they say. That's repugnant. Che was a killer. Socialism kills. I think that at the heart of my philosophy is much more libertarianism than... Well, that's the fashionable word these days, I guess. A conservative is no longer just that. He's a libertarian. And well, always has been. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. And what is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny. All right, welcome back. Uh, you're listening to Live with Lou, and uh, my earphones are weird today. I think I got a little uh, short in my thing over on this on this side. I can hear. I can hear. We're all right. It just uh, keeps clicking. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, some of you may say, "Oh, Lou, you shouldn't say shitty." You know, but I w I was going to use defecation, but I knew that a lot of students wouldn't understand that term because I was noticing uh, in the paper, the Appeal Democrat on October 3rd, it said that uh, uh, more than half of Sutter and Yuba County students failed to meet English and math standards in a spring standardized test. And uh, the, the number of those who did not meet the standard for mathematics was nearly 72%. And um, f over 50% of the people uh, couldn't do the language arts, English language. You know, it's funny because I used to have some Mexican students in my Spanish class, and you know how we, we had these, we're, you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny how we think human beings are so hypocritical. So I, I used to think that the Mexican guys had an upper hand on the Spanish class, right? But yet I didn't have an upper hand on the English class, right? I still had to pass English, right? Is it still right so it's like oh you know, you're mexican you should get an a but in english i wasn't getting no a right so these kids uh almost 60 percent of them couldn't even weren't even up to standard in other words if they're a sixth grader they weren't performing sixth grade english level so shitty i think everybody gets shitty don't you think even a, a third maybe a three-year-old kid shitty we got it De defecation like what's what is that uh, so like education defecation, like what, what is that? Is that, what is that stuff? We're going to school. I got school. So I was talking about the need for a, uh, a, a shit map and a shit app, uh, in, in Yuba Sutter, uh, so we can start, uh, knowing where we're going to have to fight the hepatitis outbreak. Now, uh, I, I, I was driving, I was coming back in from, I think overseas, and I was coming in over the East Street Bridge and made the first right there on uh, 3rd Street. And a guy was uh, going number two. Should I use number two? Going number two, 
right where the Chiseler's Inn used to be, right right across the alley from uh, my favorite taco stand. Like, that's a bad sign, right? Jim Boy's Taco, and you got guy pooping right across the alley. That's a bad sign. Had his pants down, and the guy was kind of standing next to him like, I don't know if he had a seizure or something. Had a, had a, if he had too big of an experience, the guy was going to rescue him. So I had a guy standing next to him, not trying to cover him up, but the guy was down there having, having, you know, relieving himself. So I thought it would be good. Uh, you know, it's just like, we want to know like where the parking, parking problems are in the community and where the traffic snarls are. So maybe we should find out where the defecation piles are, the shit piles are. And, uh, so anyway, uh, Scott Mitnick, the county administrator for Sutter County, w- once he came to town, he sized up the place and decided that that Yuba County or the Sutter County Airport was not a place that was being profitably used, and we ought to be done with it. And we ought to be done with all those odds and ends uses along 2nd Street. So one way to, to a step towards that, is I know they're thinking, oh, well, this is going to be a temporary program. The The news release said two years. I don't know. You know, Lyndon Johnson in the 1960s, President Johnson thought that he was going to win the war on poverty. But here we are in 2017, almost 2018. Uh, that's a long ways from 1960s. And we have the same amount of poverty percentage in the United States as we did when we started 90, but we spent trillions of dollars. Now, I don't know whether these Sutter County super, you know, the Sutter County supervisors, they, they look, they clean up nice. And some of them actually run their own business and made a profit, but they don't seem very smart to me because they are saying they're letting their boss, Mr. Mitnick say, or maybe, I don't know who's the boss Mitnick or the supervisors. I think constitutionally they are. But it seemed like he's got him by the short hairs, and uh, and they're thinking that they're going to solve homelessness in two years. Now they're they're funding now. It, it, you know how it is. It's always easy to spend somebody else's money than your own, right? So they just have all this money that just they're just going to spend this money, a couple million dollars but they can't fix your road and they can't keep their offices open Monday through Friday anymore. They say that they're saving us money, but it's really, it's, it's being nice to the employees. Do you know, do you notice that government always makes decisions to benefit their employees, not the kids, not the, not the uh, citizens, the same way the school district always makes decisions to benefit the employees, the union, the employees, not the children, right? Everything revolves around the employees, not service. So Mitnick worked out closing some of those offices now. And uh, so uh, now we're going to solve homelessness in two swift years. That's pretty fast. So we're going to fund this with a couple of million dollars of your and my tax dollars. It's interesting. Roads can't be fixed. We can't fix this park. We can't do this. We can't do that. But we got to cut back on the hours we're open. Uh, but we can, we can give more money to people that are doing stupid stuff out there. Right. Instead of like penalizing them, like I, I, my friend, Walter Williams, the economist likes to say, if you don't want, if you don't want more of something, tax it. Right. If you want a lot of something, subsidize it. So there we go. We're subsidizing homelessness. And the amazing thing to me is all of a sudden, even though for hundreds of years, we've had social workers, right? And they haven't been able to solve this up to now, but now, oh my God, and they're having all kinds of success. But when you read the numbers, they, they, the numbers are two, 12, 12 people got into a hotel, two people got a job, right? Or eight people, right? And they spent $300,000. Wouldn't you in private business, wouldn't you like to have that kind of money to have those kind of outcomes? So they're going to fund a temporary emergency shelter. They're going to put up 17 large tents on cement slabs with 24 seven security, some toilets and water. And, uh, and they're going to use that 
and they're going to have a parking area, and they're going to use that until they can construct a 6,000-square-foot building. Now, this, this tent operation is going to house up to 200 people. I want you to th just think of that. 200 people plus all their animals and friends stopping in, and you're going to have them hanging out down there while you have posse stuff going on. I think the footprint of this operation was actually over the top of the posse area. Now, listen to the supervisors. Anytime you say, whoa, what about the posse area? Oh, we'll build you a new one. Whoa, what about the Little League parks? And we don't want all those molesters down there. You know, you know there's thousands of feet now that a molester can't be near any any uh, child access areas, parks, schools, right? In, in the city of Marysville, a person with a, a sex registrant can't live anywhere in the city of Marysville because there's so many parks and schools in that concentrated area. They got to go out in Linden Oliver's and live or up in the hills. And so now we got these, we got this homeless shelter operation, this tent city going to be right next to public, uh, the Peach Bowl Little League with hundreds of kids in and out of there. So uh, up to 200 people. Now the the startup costs uh, are going to be a quarter of a million dollars. Isn't that amazing? That's a lot of money, isn't it? And the tent shelter part of it, this is more, 115000 That's top cots, tents, animal kennels, on-site storage personal belongings. Another 285000 They just throw these numbers around. You think they were rich? You think they had money coming out their ears? As my dad used to say, you think money? You you, you spend money like it's coming out your ears. Two hundred eighty-five thousand in operating costs, right? We're going to provide you know meals, toiletries, services, uh, hands of hope, hands of hope. The nonprofit they're going to cash in on this dude. Uh, private security. I don't know whether we're going to protect those guys from the citizens, or we're protecting the citizens from those guys, or we're protecting them from each other. I don't know. Uh, over there at Bendorf Zoo, which they're saying they're modeling it after Bendorf Zoo, which is a total disaster. You know, the government's never going to claim they failed. Did you know that? Do, have you ever heard the government say the, the, that food stamps has failed, even though millions, hundreds of millions of dollars is, is uh, ripped off in food stamps every year? They're never going to admit failure. Welfare, no, nah, that's not a failure. No, 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 we're, we're, we're helping people. And um, so uh, they're going to apply to transfer 720000 additional dollars from the Community Development Block Grant Funds uh, to, to use on this program away from where they normally use that money. So uh, to, to build this 6,000-square-foot building, which is going to have – you know, it's going to be a shelter, showers, the whole thing, kitchen, the thing. And they're going to house up to 60 people. Now, is this a two-year program where they're going to, like, evacuate and they're going to flush out all those people after two years, including a building that's a permanent structure they just spent seven, three-quarters of a million dollars on? So Chuck Smith, who is the public information officer for Sutter County, said, uh, this temporary operation is going to be a year or a year and a half or, 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 you know, who really knows, right? Who knows? It's interesting. All of a sudden the social services workers think they're going to see, they're going to see people converted, right? From alcoholism, drug addicts, a big old funky attitude, right? Uh, and they're going to make a silks purse out of a, a big old porker, right? And, uh, people that can't, how are you going to get people jobs that can't stay clean or they got a bad attitude? They don't show up on time. How are you going to do all that? Well, they're going to, they're going to have these, all these skills. They're going to train people. I would like to, you to get this. The government is the worst trainer. Unless you want to get into the military, the government has the worst record of training people for work or self-sufficiency of any place. In fact, I had one of the leaders in Sutter County Welfare who I became friends with years ago. She's now retired. She said, Lou, she was so disgusted, but she couldn't change anything, right? It's government rules. And she was just one of their top workers. And she still lives, in fact, she lives up here in Loma Rica. She said to me, Lou, welfare recipients, if we want to offer a young lady 
or a young guy that's a head of household assistance with how to budget the few dollars we give them, we're forbidden by law to assist them. It's interesting. You'd think, oh, if the government was so interested in helping people get off welfare or not waste their welfare or use their funds efficiently, we would mentor them a little bit, right? Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to do that. We just want to throw money. It's just like, you know, this all this money going to the, the quote, poor. You know something? If I start doing drugs again today, I'm going to get poor really fast, right? I'm going to use up all my money. And because uh, doing drugs is expensive. And then I forget to pay my PG&E bill and get my PG&E shut off. And then I won't be able to pay all those taxes and pay for those DACA kids out at Yuba College. And pretty soon I'll end up without a home doing drugs and getting drunk all the time, right? And pretty soon I'll be in need of a good social worker that's going to correct my all my behavior and fix me up and get me back on my feet. I'm just wondering where have all those people been all these years or all these are the new college students graduating today? Are they able to do miracles in people's lives? You know, I meet these people in the Yuba County jail and people need a miracle, man. And, uh, so they're going to have programs to provide a path to self-sufficiency, including job training and affordable housing. Now I want to ask you, what is affordable housing? You know, uh, I can afford a house if I go to work, but here's the, uh, here's what I'm afraid of. When the government decides we're going to take care of these people, whatever people those are, we're going to give a single mom plus a few kids, $800 a month. And then, then they think, well, that isn't enough to rent a house. Then what they got to do is go out and convince a homeowner, a property owner to rent to that young woman. And only she only going to pay $50 and the government, you and me, we're going to pay the extra $700 or 750. That's called affordable housing. In other words, that's people. It's not like you earning more money. So then you can go buy your house or rent your house. It's like, giving houses away. That's, it's a code word or a euphemism. You know how Planned Parenthood family planning is a euphemism on cutting kids and stabbing kids in the neck and poisoning them with saline solutions. That's a euphemism or code words for murdering children, family planning. That's what that is. And so affordable housing is a code word of giving more of your tax dollars away uh, to people who sit in houses trash them, pay hardly anything for them, let all the lawns die. Have you ever been to a housing project where there's nice shrubs and lawns and it's beautiful and everybody behaves themselves and they, they take care of their houses like their own? I haven't go, go, go on Google Detroit and check out their housing projects today. Anyway, uh, at this meeting where Jim Whitaker uh, let people speak about item nine, though item nine disappeared before they got to talk, it was a little screwy. So now we have a new ordinance in spite of people talking about it because they were talking about a law that had already been passed. Isn't that interesting? It's amazing how government works when they want something to happen to hell with the rules to hell with the fine details. And I was, before I, uh, before we had that break, I was telling about a company that had bid on a project there in Sutter County and they, they, uh, did not provide a proper signature. I guess they provided a stamp, not a signature on the bid. And so they rejected the bid, even though it was the best bid, the lowest bid, and they gave it to the other person because they paid attention to detail. They did everything according to the, to the rules. So then right in the same meeting, chairman Whitaker broke the rules. In fact, he checked on whether he broke the rules right in the meeting. And it's all you actually, you can see it on the uh, recording to go on the Sutter County website and just click on the video for 10, the meeting at 10, 10, and you can hear the County council says, 
Well, the way you did that right there, you need to now have a separate meeting to hear all these complaints and stuff. He said, I don't want to do that. I'll take responsibility for it. So in other words, as long as the government is, is, uh, in, in the government can violate their own rules, they don't have to pay attention to detail, but a person that works really hard and submits a bid and signs it, but signed it, didn't sign it with a hand signature. They lost the bid. Isn't that interesting? Double standard, isn't it? So what we have going on here is, you know, the interesting thing to me is the way the supervisors just say, you know, when I was talking to, uh, I was talking to supervisor Solinger, right? Remember when the first issue with the airport came up, they were going to eliminate the shooting range. They said, Oh, after all, after 50 years of it being there, now it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Even though the NRA says it's not dangerous and they provide all kinds of safety precautions that nobody's going to shoot an airplane by accident. Now we got homeless down there that have already proved they get out on the airport and go nuts, steal, break into the, the hangars, break into aircraft, fuss around with the aircraft. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know whether you've ever done any LSD, you ever done any psychedelics? Well, I'll tell you, man, you, when you get loaded up on that stuff and an airplane comes in, that could be quite an experience per, your perception of that. And the other day we had some wacko, uh, in the river bottom shooting at one of the, uh, levy repair operations, the big piece of equipment up there, maybe it was keeping him awake or something, that thing grinding away up there, digging trenches inside the levy. So what we have is, is a major problem down there. And so it's interesting. The supervisors are continually say, Oh, Oh, d don't, don't worry about, it. we'll build you a new one. We'll build you a new that we'll get you a new arena. We'll get you a new shooting range. We'll get you uh, a new ballpark. In fact, Dan Flores promised the peach bowl literally, Oh, we'll build you brand new ballparks. I thought, how long is that going to take? Or was Dan Flores going to pay for that himself? Right. Uh, Who's going to pay for that posse deal? Who's going to pay for that shooting range out there in Sutter that Ron Sullen just said, oh, yeah, we're negotiating. We're going to, we're going to put a shooting range for the Sutter County, uh, the shooting club at Sutter, uh, Sutter High School. Uh, we can have all the public shooting range out there, the Sheriff's Department shooting. We're going to like, it's just like, oh, yeah, we've got big plans. I, I, I'd like people talk about big plans with their money, not my money right? Why, why is this socialist? Why you take all my money? And then you think five people can decide what's best for the community. Oh, we're going to give you money to that alcoholic over there. Cause he looks like he needs it. Why don't you let me keep my money and me, I'll decide whether he needs it or not. How about that? Let me offer him a job. And if he won't take it, then I'm not going to support him. Right. Instead of you thinking, Oh, you're going to fix somebody. There's not one person. There's not one person on that board, ever taken in a homeless person to straighten them out or, or a heroin addict or a meth addict, right? There's not one person on there. In fact, I don't know whether any of your social workers have any personal experience other than eight to five or eight to four or nine to four, whatever their hours are personal experience with their own money, helping people out of a funky deal in life. Oh yeah. They all, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're helping people. Oh yeah. We gave them. We gave them like they do them in Yuba County. We gave them 300 referrals, a referral. That's not reformation. That's just a referral. We'll be right back. I'm Chris Ann Hall. And if you agree with me, as Samuel Adams said, that knowledge and virtue are the keys to preserving liberty, then join me for free at Liberty First University. For a limited time, we are offering a five-day trial membership at no cost and no risk to you. But as Sam Adams said, our ignorance may cost us our liberties. Go to libertyfirstuniversity.com and enroll today for your five-day free trial membership. 
Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's the only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at eterritorial.com So I went to this Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet and while the owner, he got pissed. I mean, he was rude though. He'd come out every hour. (laughs) Son of a bitch still here. Look, he go again. He started screaming at me. You're gone now. You're here for hour. Why you here for hour? You not come here anymore. Why you have spare rib? You're so big. Eat vegetable. Eat broccoli. You're scared. Uh, you're listening to Live with Lou. We've been having a good time over here today, and uh, we're here at KMYC, the Patriot, 1410 a.m. on Mount Hooth, and we're getting close to landing the plane. We're out of here at noon, and there's going to be a sports program on here. So I want to just uh, make a couple more comments uh, and restate a couple things Uh, i want to make sure that you know i've been talking about this homeless issue and i just want to uh you folks over there in sutter county if you think this is going to work out for you without you doing anything about it you're really wrong so my recommendation to you whether you live in the city or outside the city is you better talk to your supervisors Uh, that are going to make this decision about this homeless camp and some of you may want to say something like hey we already have plenty of services for homeless people they can get section 8 housing they can go to rehabs if there's if they have a drug problem they can go to mental health if they have a mental health issue they can go here they can go there they can do this they can do that but we ain't putting up no more money no more tax dollars we don't want no facility for them we don't want no tent city, etc. You might want to say something like that. And, and you guys that have facilities along Garden Highway, I would say to them, if you want to build us a new ballpark, Dan Flores, then just go build that thing. And when you get done building it and we move over there, then do with the property we're on with what you want to do, but we ain't moving till then. Same way with all those other services. Now, the unfortunate thing is, is the, the Sutter – uh, the airport folks, the private nonprofit, sent out a tough letter like, hey, we better do something. This is wrong, 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 wrong. Then they turned around and went ne- neutral on the deal. So, hey, somebody better stand up and fight for something or you're going to get yourself a big old funky taco and you're going to be spending $2 million of your own tax money for it. So hold that thought. And the next supervisor's meeting that you're going to get a chance to appear at, and I would uh, make sure you're there if you care, is on uh, the 24th of this month. That's a Tuesday, and I think they're having these meetings at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, but as the supervisor said the other day at the 1010 meeting, the October 10th meeting, oh, we're just open. Just call us up. We're not, don't have to be afraid of us. Like we're just, we're just good old boys. We, we're just like you just call us up. We're open. We'll, we'll talk, 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 talk. I would remind them that they don't know Jack Diddley about what they're doing. Neither does a nearly $300,000 guy who can't even fund his own son's baseball team with making almost $300,000 a year down there in Ventura County. But he's up here telling us how to spend money to help homeless folks. 
So that's what I would make sure to do that. Now, the, the other group of you that have been fighting this Sutter Buttes Flood Control Agency, who are little dictators is what they are, and who uh, thought, hey, uh, we like you citizens advisory group as long as you keep your mouth shut and never find anything wrong with what we're doing. But as soon as you find something wrong, you start asking questions and make our life difficult. It's kind of like getting rid of the IRS because you don't want an audit, right? Said, oh, I liked you till you wanted to come and do an audit. That's going to be, be a big pain in the rear, right? So if you want to get in on that Sutter Buttes flood control talk, that's, that's this Monday night, two days from now at the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots meeting uh, at 6.30 at night, but get there at 6 when the door opens so you're not walking in and you miss the first the first part of it. And uh, it's free of charge, and anybody's welcome. And if you want to, like, ask questions about you might be concerned. I don't know. Have, have you noticed how everybody's kind of forgotten about the spillway? <laughs> Isn't that funny how things just grab your attention for a while and then something else grabs your attention for a while. So, uh, anyway, that, that's another meeting you should attend and, and be involved in and be interested in, particularly those that these guys and gals are spending hundreds of millions of dollars and you and the next people that own your property and the next people that own your property going to be paying for that for 30 some years. Whoa, baby. It's a lot. So I was noticing, you know, every once in a while people talk, Oh, tobacco, you know, tobacco kills you. This kills you. That kills you. You know, Oh, darn you selling, uh, vapor cigarettes and, Oh, you're selling, you know, you, you're drinking all these sugary drinks. And have you ever, have you ever looked at what the cause, the big causes of death are in this country? Let me, let me run some off diabetes, alcoholism, Alzheimer's, pneumonia, kidney failure, blood infections, hospital associated infection, accidents, unintentional accidents. That would include auto crashes as well as falling off your roof, stroke, medical errors, right? Obesity, tobacco, cancer, heart disease. Do you know what the big, you know what the biggest killer is in the United States? Abortion. Oh, you say that doesn't count. You know, it doesn't count really. It's not a disease. Well, to the people who are pregnant, it is. They want that thing terminated. Just like if you went and got rid of cancer. Are you wanting to solve a kidney problem or a pneumonia problem? You go into the hospital, get, get rid of that. Leave it there at the hospital where it belongs. Abortion's killing, this says here, according to statistics, uh, it says causes of death in the USA in 2016 just through June 15th. Now, I don't know whether that's just six months or whether that's a fiscal year where they started at July 1 of the previous year, but I think it's just six months because I always think of a million people dying of abortion each year. I always get a kick, you know, this Black Lives Matter and all these people concerned about blacks. And uh, the the biggest killer of blacks is abortions. But no, you know, don't you know that the liberals never want to get down to the root cause? They don't want to talk about that welfare and providing Social Security disability to addicts is causing an entire demographic group that is uh, that is not participating in society anymore. And they're your group that is out there living in the river bottoms. Do you know that? And um, I'm, I'm scanning down here because I, I wanted to talk about something that uh, if I can find this, there's all these lies like, you think, oh, what's really killing black people, right? We got Colin Kaepernick, 
saying the reason I'm I'm uh, not standing for the national anthem is that I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. But Colin, he's got some black in him, and he's making a bajillion dollars a year. Seventy-five percent of his teammates happen to be black. They're the most wealthy people in the country, and yet they're oppressed. I was thinking maybe I would like some of that oppression. I could use some of that money, and I would take a little prejudice going to a hotel and person not giving me good service. If I was a multimillionaire, I'd say, oh, go to the next hotel. He says there's bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder, talking about cops. When they shoot somebody, they put them on paid leave, right? Well, he should get over that. All government gets paid leave when they get put on you know, their check. So he says, this says, a Larry Elder wrote this great article. Larry happens to be a black guy. He says, according to the Centers for Disease Control, since 1968, police killings of blacks have declined nearly 75%. According to the Washington Post, almost 500 whites were killed by cops in 2015. Well, how come they're killing all those white people? You know, this station, this station is the motto. Of this station is white lives matter. So why are they killing off 500 whites over there in 2015? They're killing more than one a day. Well, how many, how many blacks you think got killed in 2015? You want to take a guess? According to Ka Kaepernick, you think Kaepernick can count? I don't know. 259 blacks were killed by the police in 2015. Most of those suspects killed by the police, whites and blacks, were packing a weapon. So maybe they thought they might, the cops thought maybe they're going to get shot first. Like the other day, yesterday, Yuba County Sheriff's Department shot a guy and killed him out here in Oliverst. He was in there while someone was living in the house. The guy was in there burglarizing the house. And they went out there to intervene, and they ended up having to shoot the fellow. Now, I don't know whether, what flavor he was or whether he was pulling a gun first, but they shot him. So details at 11. Now, so I'm going to compare shooting with lightning. Do you know anyone who has ever been struck by lightning? Well, I know Joe Betancourt. He runs the two mortuaries, Lakeside Colonial and Twin Cities Chapel. And his relative got struck by lightning and got killed. That's a, that blew my mind, right? And I remember it was a tip call where a, a husband and wife were walking out to, to cover up a tractor out in the field and lightning hit and it knocked her out, killed him. When she woke up, her husband was dead next to her right out here in Gridley area. Maybe that was Joe's relative. So people get struck by lightning, right? But most people don't know anybody that personally has been struck by lightning. Yet each year, it says an average of 300 Americans are killed or injured by lightning. That's 40 more than the number of blacks killed by police in 2015. Do you remember how many I told you? 259 were killed in 2015. More people were killed by lightning than blacks killed by cops in 2015. So nobody's saying there's an epidemic of Americans being hit by lightning and we should, like, go track down God and file a complaint. We don't know the number of black men injured by lightning every year either. But let's assume that the number is 7% of the total population struck by lightning, mirroring the percentage of black male population in America. In other words, about 7% of the population in America is black males. That percentage comes out to about 21 black males struck by lightning. If we're being fair about who's getting struck, I mean, if, God, if God's actually instigating it or it's just a natural occurrence that God started once upon a time, however that happened, whose ever fault it is, we got to blame somebody, right? Well, black men, about 21 probably were killed if we're, doing, if we're being fair and we have quotas. Out of 965 people killed by the police in 2015, less than 4%, 4%, not 7%, black males involved in unarmed black man and white cop. The fact 
let me just say that again. The Post reported that less than 4% involved an unarmed black man and a white cop. That means that black man didn't have a gun. This is what the Black Lives Matter people claim that's an epidemic, less than 4%. Last year, the Washington Post put the number of unarmed black men killed by police at 17 men. 17. One seven. Remember, we said lightning, if, they, if we did it according, uh, appropriated the right percentage of black men in America to lightning deaths, 21 black men should have been killed by lightning if it was fair. If it was fair. But in 2015, the Post said unarmed black men just like he was unarmed when he got hit by a lightning, 21 of them, just 17 unarmed black men were killed by the police, less than the number of blacks struck by lightning. 22 unarmed whites were killed by police. Some people say blacks are routinely and disproportionately being stopped by and pulled over and harassed and arrest due to Police misconduct. In other words, police are out for a ride. They eat their tuna sandwich, drink their cup of coffee, and they said, ah, I'll look for some blacks to pull over. That's what the kind of the teaching is from the Black Lives Matter pe people. But according to studies by the government, that's the liberal government of the United States. The bureaucrats of the United States are primarily liberals. Let's look at traffic stops. In 2013, the National Institute of Justice, the Research and Evaluation Agency of the Department of Justice, published a study of whether police, as a result of racial bias, stop blacks more than other drivers, whites, Asians, Me Mexicans, right? The conclusion, what do you think? It says any racial disparity in traffic stops is due to differences in and the number of people offending as a, in addition to differences in exposure to the police and differences in driving patterns. In other words, there's justification for it. It has nothing to do with, oh, they got pulled over just because they were of a certain flavor. So they go on to talk about that. It says the research says it's true that a black person is more likely to have multiple contacts with the police, but according to the data, multiple contacts with police are rare as well. This writer says that 1.2% of white men have more than three contacts with police in a year. Have you ever had three contacts with police in a year? I haven't. I maybe have, I don't even, I haven't had one in a long time where somebody pulled me over for something but I've never had multiple contacts in 12 months. This says that 1.2% of white men have more than three contacts with police in a year. 1.5% of black men. So the department of justice bureau of justice statistics regularly studies this, this thing, the experience of black people with police versus the experience of white people, please. In other words, are black people treated unkindly versus white people? So every year, this is interesting. I didn't know this. Every year, the Bureau of Justice Statistics surveys a, a representative sample of 70,000 people that were contacted. Among the questions, the survey asked whether respondents had contacted, had contact with the police in the last 12 months. If so, their survey, survey asks a number of follow-up questions, including uh, the use of force, questions about force. So from that random sampling of 70,000 individuals in the country who were then asked, did you have any contact with the police? Oh, you did? How'd that go? And they ask a bunch of questions about it. So the writer says only six-tenths of a percent of black men experience physical force by the police in any given year while approximately point to tens percent of white guys do so it says keep in mind that the tallies of police violence include violence that is legally justified in other words if like i saw on the on uh facebook the other day where a, a thug had to be black attacked a cop he just attacked him 
So, hey, you got to defend yourself, right? So it says, keep in mind much higher levels of crime by most black males. Did you know that black homicide victims, male and female, over 90% of the time, the, the perpetrator is a black male? Did you know that? Not some white dude. So it's estimated that half of all homicides are committed by black males. That's all homicides in the entire United States of America. Now, police aren't causing that. I want you to just think about that. Half of everyone that is murdered in the United States of all flavors are killed by black guys. Don't you think they should be pursued for that and arrested and prosecuted? I don't know. Seems, seems legitimate to me. In 1995, the federal government looked at 42,500 defendants in the nation's 75 largest counties. I think there's over 3,000 counties in the United States. I counted them up one time uh, because I was talking about TIP because we, we were one of the few counties in the United States that have TIP, trauma intervention. So uh, they looked at 42,500 defendants in the nation's 75 largest counties. And... Uh, Patrick Langan, he's a government statistician, probably voted for Hillary, found no evidence that in the places where blacks in the United States have most of their contacts with the justice system, that system treats them more harshly than whites. He didn't find any evidence that the system treated them unfairly. So it's interesting when we, uh, you know, honestly, by the end of the year, I wonder whether the NFL is going to still be in business. Have you wondered that? Whoa, baby. I mean, they are, it, they're in free fall. This NFL thing is in free fall. I, I'm not for them or against them. I've kind of lost interest in them because it, it, it irritates me that guys, uh, I, you know, all these arguments, do they have a right to do this? Don't they have a right to do this? Da, 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 all this stuff, stuff, stuff. I don't really care. Honestly, at the end of the day, there's more important things to do. I'm more concerned about people who just lost their house in Loma Rica. That's what I'm interested in. So anyway, uh, the NFL is uh, this whole thing. The, the reasoning behind Kaepernick is all faulty. The facts are totally faulty. It's, it's, a, it's a humbug. I don't know whether Kaepernick's just stupid or he's a fraud or somebody's dishing him off some really stupid information. So before we... Before we wind the plane down, do we got a few minutes here? Four, four minutes. I just want to, uh, again, state for the fire victims. Now, and again, if your house is there, but you have smoke damage or you have property damage, your outbuildings have been damaged, fences have been damaged, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's, go find out, you know, my friends always say, you can't make a good decision without good information. So I'm going to quickly give you where the information centers are Loma Rica Lions Club at five, six, six, seven Fruitland road, five, six, six, seven Fruitland, Yuba center fairgrounds, Franklin and Wilbur in Yuba city, 10 AM to 6 PM. They have information center. Okay. And that's going to continue, uh, up through Tuesday <coughs> and then starting Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of this coming week at the government center, at the base of the 10th street bridge in Marysville, where the, where monkey wards or Montgomery wards used to be ninth and ninth and, uh, I street, big center there in the supervisor's chambers. You can't miss it. You walk in the, the front doors and you just keep going and I'll have signs. They're going to have a one stop arena in there of all the agencies and organizations that can provide you services to get back on your feet, whether you lost, maybe you just have smoke damage and you got to figure out, Hey, I, the building's still there. My house is still there, but no, I can't live in there, man. It's like toxic. How are you going to fix that? Right? So that's 10 AM to 8 AM on those three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this coming week. And it's, it's a one-stop local assistance center. Okay. Then I want to remind you, if you get in there and you just got a blackened, smoke-filled, funky-smelling deal and you have all these clothes in there you spent thousands of dollars to buy, don't throw them out. Clean right, build right. Uh, 
can clean them for you, and it'll be either no charge or a nominal fee. So give them a call. I'm going to give you two numbers, 742-5024. That's, that's during working time, normal hours, 742-5024, or there's an 800 number after hours, 800 870 0030. Let me say it again. 800 870 0030. Now they can, they can take your furniture and clean it. It's, it's a, it isn't like soap and water. It isn't like steam cleaning. It's, it's, they put it in a room and it changes the molecular structure of the room to purge the funkiness out of those couches and stuff. So try to save your stuff if it's there, right? or your clothes, right? And they can pull that off in, in the clothing thing in 24, 48 hours. So that's at 350 Bridge Street, clean right, build right, 350. So give them a shout out and say, hey, can you handle my clothes? I'll bring them down, right? And tell them how many bags you got, okay? And uh, they'll start helping you out. All right, uh, let's see. All the roads should be open up there. Power isn't to every place, but they're 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 hot on it. Uh, pg and &E is on it. So uh, anyway, I think that's all I can jam in here today. We thank Russ Brown for calling us up. Uh, information officer, he does a great job for Yuba County. Thank you, Yuba County, law enforcement, fire, all the uh, workers of Yuba County who are running these 24-hour hotlines. Oh, 749-7700 uh, is a 24-hour call center for Yuba County. If you get up, you think a middle light, oh, my God, I forgot to ask this. Coach call 749-7700. Tips number? 673-9300, 673-9300 if you want to talk to us 24 hours a day. See you later.